and stuff. Guys, what bowling? Yeah. And who 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 bowled at least one strike? Who at least had one gutter ball? <laughs> who had multiple gutter balls? <laughs> who had gutter balls, multiple gutter balls in a row? <laughs> All right, you were very good. You had a good time then. And you, and you laughed at each other, made, gave, and high fives and all those kinds of things? No. Who dropped a ball on their foot? <laughs> See, I had a great day as if I was there. Uh, let's say a prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, we're glad to be back together to be here in this room, and we ask that you would fill it with a desire to learn about the love you have for us in Jesus Christ. Um, we ask you to bless us as we trust in you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you that um, this is the this is our fifth class, if you include last week, the fifth week together. I have thoroughly enjoyed the time that I have been privileged to spend with you and appreciate the quality of work that you do and the way that you have treated me by being very attentive and, and doing everything that I ask. And I don't take that for granted. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. I'm going to need you to work hard again tonight. Because next week is a test. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why, would, why would we give you a test? There are two reasons for tests. What's one of them? You know, one of them is to learn. What, the, the real goal of tests, now, we kind of think we're taking tests to get a grade. And that's not really the purpose of grades. Grades are simply a motivation to try to entice you to learn things that are really important. Or sometimes they're not a motivation, they're kind of a threat. You know, if you don't get a good grade, there are going to be consequences to that. My purpose isn't to give you grades. It's to help you say, here are some important things that I as a Christian need to know, and then to say, do I know these things that God would want me to know and to have here in my heart? And so that's the purpose of the test, is to, to kind of help identify for you some important stuff, and then you decide, say, these important things that I need to know for my Christian walk and my Christian life, do I know? And the test says, yeah, I know, or no, I've got some more work to do. Okay? Here's the way that we'll do a test, is uh, tonight, before we're finished, we'll do a review that looks almost exactly like the test. And why would we do it that way? It's not that we want to make you fail, it's we want to help you know, here are the important things you need to know. Do you know? If you don't learn, if you do, drive in deep so that they last a long, long time. I think I said to you, I am so jealous of you. I am working on learning some Swahili right now. And I've got some Swahili tapes that I listen to, and they are tapes, they're old. I have to drive my old car that still has a, a tape deck in it. And, uh, and I used to learn languages like that, I was so fast. Do you know when kids are little bitty kids, do you know how many times they need to hear a word repeated to be able to remember it? 10 times, 10 times, and the words there, forever. Now, traveling with learning disabilities, some might need to hear it a hundred times. Some of them with more severe learning disabilities might need to hear it and use it a thousand times, two thousand times, three thousand times. But at your age, ten times you got it. You get to my age, I'm at the severely disabled age. It takes me a couple thousand times. And I've tried to memorize things. And I recognize now at my age, it just takes me a lot longer to get used to. I have to work a lot harder at it. Uh, so the thing that's neat about these, these things that you're learning right now for confirmation, which can be important for life, you're going to have forever. And that's neat. 
That's neat. So, and the purpose of our worksheets and a test is to get you ready. So, uh, the other thing that we absolutely have to do tonight is we've got to train you to be an acolyte because in a couple of weeks we start that. Now, there's good news and bad news. The, the bad news is we've got three services every Sunday, so we need three different acolytes. Plus, we have about 30 special services during the year, and so we got 180 services or so. The bad news is we got about six, 30 kids in confirmation class, so you're only going to do it about every other month once. You don't get to do it very often, right? Well, the kids upstairs. It's a two-year process, so we've got sixth graders and seventh graders, and uh, we divvy it up. So, so you'll do it once, and then maybe another eight, nine, ten weeks before you do it again. But uh, we need to learn that, and, and you're great, great help uh, with that. Uh, it was interesting two weeks ago uh, what you guys put down of what you, I, if you recall, I ask you, just write some things that you've learned. Very, very interesting. And, and it, it revealed to me that, that you've been listening and I've been teaching some things and you're catching it because the answers were all about stuff that was really important that we talked about. Now, it was very interesting to note that two papers were exactly alike, word for word. Well, what I think that says is somebody got stuck and they went, what they are? <laughs> now, I have no idea who that is. But what I would encourage you to do is don't worry about what other people are doing. What you learn is what you learn. Uh, and that wasn't for right or wrong answers. Uh, so don't put yourself under that kind of pressure that I've got to get some of this right. What it is, our goal is to learn. So... Um, but thank you again for working so, so hard. I, do I, I turn back some homework to you. If you can put it in your notebooks, hang on to it. All of it was very well done. Does anyone owe me some assignments that you haven't collected? Hang on to both law and gospel. We're going to do that one together in class. And I think you, looks like you've got a couple ready to turn in. Hang on to this one. And that one. But I'll collect these two, all right? Yep. That one. Do you have one? We may have done that one first. Do you have Sarah and Saint? Has she done that? I may have left one at your spot to see if I did. Uh, one that you can finish up for us when you get a chance. That one you got. That one you got. And that. There it is. You've done it already. You want to turn that one in to me? Put your name on it? We did that one a couple of weeks ago. I don't think my key is going to help you any, is it? That's the only thing I've got. Back. And what's in the back there? The 
the concordance. Now, everybody look up here and see. Now, what do you remember about a concordance? You can go to the back, and it's this word. You find that concordance. Now, Maggie, how would you use the concordance to help you find the Ten Commandments? Well, you know, I don't know that uh, the commandments use the word <coughs> concordance. Here it is. Do you know any of the Ten Commandments? Give me one. Honor your father and mother. What you could go to the concordance, and what word do you think would be a good word to look up in honor? honor. You go to the concordance and you can say, I want to find a passage that says honor. And if you find one that says honor your father and your mother, then you're going to go, oh, it's going to go to the Ten Commandments. That would be one strategy. And in the back, there's a concordance. What's a different strategy that could get you there? So, anybody got a different one, Cassie? You got a different one? There are two reference works in this smart Bible. One's at the back and the other's in the front. You've directed this to one in the back. And the one in the front, well, there's two there, but I'm going to look at a different one in terms of where you find it in the Bible. One, you could go to the subject index. And I think in this one it's called the topics. And that one's in the front. Somebody help me. What page in this Bible does the concordance begin on? That one's in the one in the back with the little tiny. Anybody found it in the back? Oh, it looks like this. It begins on page 2,243. Does it include the word honor in that concordance? No. Let's turn to the H's. And let's see. Turn to the ages. Oh, I found honorable honors. Honor. Oh, my goodness. Turn to page 2,299. Did you find it? 2,299. If you look. <coughs> What does it say right there? You find that word 2,299, help each other, and you look up the word honor, and Maggie, what does it say there? It says H, your father and your mother. What does that H mean? Honor. honor. It's just a replacement for the word that's at the top. Everybody found it? Who's not found it yet? Have somebody help you get there. 2,200. 99. These pages are so thin that you can turn you, know, you turn 100 pages so quickly. You find honor right there? The big word? You got it? Look at the very first passage. It says, honor your father and your mother. Now it says EX. What does that stand for, Grace? Do you have any idea? That actually is an abbreviation for a book of the Bible. What book of the Bible do you think that is? Exodus. Exodus. Now I happen, because I memorized it, Genesis, Exodus, it happens to be the second book. Now what does that 20 mean? Faith. It says EX20. It's 20, chapter 20. The book is divided into chapters, and then each chapter is divided into verses. It's like an address. Now, did you know that when the Bible was originally written, it didn't have chapters and verses? A thousand years ago, somebody added chapters and verses. Why would they do that? So we can find our way around. You could say, oh, it's in the book of Exodus. And instead of starting at the book and say, oh, I read 600 pages to find where this is, it's in the 20th chapter, verse well, now that would be one way of finding it, right? Let's find, now let's write down the citation it wrote EX20, what verse? 12. 12. 12. Okay. The other 
and we're going to go to the topic index. Go to the front and let's find out what page the topic index is in. Oh, our own. Ooh, there are a lot of things at the front there. Ooh. Topic, topic. Anybody found it yet? I haven't found it yet. Anybody found it? Oh, there it is. Biblical topics. And let's see. It begins on page... Uh-oh. Now it uses those pros. L-X-X... I-X. I think that means page 79 in Roman numerals. Is that right? Did you, who's had to, any, do they still teach Roman numerals? Yes. I think, is LXXIX 79? L stands for 50, X stands for 10, so it's 50 plus 10 plus 10, and then you put a little number in front of a big one, and it's a minus, so one minus, so it's 79. But the biblical topics, let's see if we could find something that says, whoa, turn over to the T's. Page LXXXX. LXXXIX. I wish they could really get rid of those things. And there it says Exodus 20, 1 to 17, and DT 5, 1 to 22. Biblical topics, and then in biblical topics, find yes. ten commandments. Turn to the D, cheese. Right at the top. If you didn't find it, help each other get to them. Ah, oh, he's found it. The T's, Q's. Ah, oh, look right up here. Ten commandments. You found it by, see, it's in the biblical topics section. Now, I wish the numbering were different. It's a little confusing and it slows us down. But those would be two strategies, right? There could be a third strategy. What would the third strategy be? Let's start reading at the beginning until I found it. <laughs> that would be a pretty slow strategy, wouldn't it? Yes. I could stand. Or I could start thumbing through, looking for. Something kind of, oh, that doesn't look like it would be a very good strategy either, does it? There's another strategy. I could memorize it, where it is. Now you maybe, now for me, that's not a very successful strategy anymore. Because i got to do it a thousand times before it sticks. Now for you, it might be a much more successful strategy because you only got to do it ten times and then you got it forever. But there could be a variety of ways. What I like about this Bible is if I had to start reading it from the beginning, I would probably give up most of the time. I go, I just don't have time to find it. But if I learn to use that concordance, if I know a key word from a Bible passage, I may be able to find it that way. If I can find in these crazy Roman numerals the subject index, you know, maybe that's a place where we ought to put a bookmark where you can find it real easily. And that I could go to the subject index and it could direct me. Now, uh, but I said it was two places. This one said, honor your father and mother, which Maggie happens to know is which commandment number? Four. Four. And this gives us, what is this one gives us? Exodus 20, 1 to 17. Let's give us all 10 of them. So apparently... Uh, it doesn't begin there. Let's go to the first one that Maggie found. Let's go to Exodus 20. Now, one of the things that you'll need to memorize this year, if you don't already have it memorized, is the order of the books of the Bible. Now, who is really good at math? Okay. There's a formula for remembering how many books in the Bible there are. 
How many books in the Bible are there? Here's the formula. My favorite math formula. 3 times 9 equals 27. There are 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament for a total of 66. Whoa. So if you that's just a little mnemonic, a memory wipe. Right. 39 and 27. And I just remember that going, 3 times 9 equals 27. And that's the number of, so 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. Now, fortunately, when I memorized it, I was younger than your age, so it didn't take me a thousand repetitions to get, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 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 1st and 2nd Samuel,
How many are there already? Ah, oh, you're way ahead of me. Good. Exodus chapter 20. Oh, my goodness. There's a little bold print at the beginning of 20. What does it say? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. I could have been thumbing through looking for the Ten Commandments, but that wouldn't have been a very successful strategy, would it? Now, what I want you to do is look down. You see that little tiny print right here in the middle? You found that? Right under verse 5? See that bold 22? Now that references chapter 19, verse 22, and it finds you some other passages that say the same thing. Do you look down and see where it says chapter 20? That chapter 20, bold 1. Have everybody look there. Make sure you found it. Make sure everybody on your rows got that. Right here. Can you make sure he's got it? Everybody find that. You got it? Yeah, right in there. You got it, Grace? Make sure everybody's got it. Everybody got it there? And then it says for verses 1 to 17, now we happen to know verses 1 to 17 are about the Ten Commandments. It says CDT. You see that DT? What does DT stand for? Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now, who knows what Deuteronomy means? Deuter comes from the same root as the word that we use, duo. What does duo mean? Two. Two. Deuter means two. In fact, you can see even in uh, Spanish, dos. The same kind of roots, duo, dos. Second, nomos, the second law. Deuteronomy records the second report of the Ten Commandments, the law, second law. That's where we get that name. But do you see where it says? That little smart stuff says chapter 21 for VV verses 1 to 7, see Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 21. The Bible, if you've got one, you can go down and look at these helps, and it'll help you find other places where you'll find the same thing recorded. Isn't that neat? It's a good, smart Bible. You find it one place, you learn to read this stuff, and it directs you to new places to find it. We're looking at Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Justin, what he's talking about there? Um, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. If you know your Bible stories, Remember God's people were slaves in Egypt? And God raised up a man named Moses to lead them out of slavery. So they were slaves, and God led them to freedom. That's what this is referencing here. So we follow along. And there it begins. You know, um, it, it's a very, very interesting style that the Ten Commandments are written in. But uh, it begins by saying, you know, the one who's giving you these orders is the one who rescued you. You think if somebody came and rescued you and said, you know, you're a slave and I'm setting you free, now here's some commands. Do you think you'd sit up and listen to those? Mm -hmm. That's a way of saying thanks, right? If you've been a slave, and somebody's come and rescue you, saying, now here's what I need you to do. Okay, I'll, I, I'd say, I'm going to listen. I'm going to sit up. I owe you that. You've taken care of me. What the Ten Commandments are, are our way of saying thanks to God for His rescuing us, right? 
But here it is. It lists the commandments. And they begin, you shall have no other gods. How many of them are there? One, two, six, three. The ten. Ten commandments. The ten commandments. Yeah. You shall have no other gods is the first one. But there you find it. Let's turn to Deuteronomy. Now, we said that was the fifth book. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So find Deuteronomy 5. And why don't you go to verse 6.
You got it exactly right, didn't you? The way the book puts it. What's the Sabbath day? The day of rest. So let's go back to the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day, the day of rest, and for Justin, for us, what's the day of rest that we call the Sabbath? What day of the week? Sunday. Sunday. By keeping it holy. Decide if you've kept it broke. Fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Honor your father and mother. Number five. You shall not commit adultery. And you shall not murder. Excuse me, five. Number five, you shall not murder. Number six, you shall not commit adultery. That's talking about sexual relationships, of having sex outside of marriage. Number seven, you shall not steal. Number eight, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet my, your neighbor's house. What does covet mean? What could we, what strategy could we find for finding what covet means? You know what covet means? Yeah. Let's go back to that glossary and see if it helps us at the back. See what covet means. Oh! It's not there. Or is it? Yep. Oh, it is there. It's on page 329. <clears throat> to desire something God does not want us to have. Okay. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. And the tenth, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, workers, animals, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So have you decided how many of those commandments have you broken? Who said they've broken all ten of them? Well, you know, that's a great question. You know, let's find the words of Jesus. Let's go to our, con our concordance and see how Jesus used the word murder. I think we did this one a couple of weeks ago in class. Do you remember? Jesus said, I say to you, if you say raka, which means just kind of kind of a curse word about your brother. found on page 2322 in the concordance the word murder and it says you shall not murder Exodus 20 we know that's from the Ten Commandments oh the next one Deuteronomy 517 we know that's from the Ten Commandments but if you go to the next one Matthew 521 those of old you sh shall not murder let's look at MT Caleb you got an idea what an MT stands for what? You got it, Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Nicely done, Caleb. Let's go to the first book of the New Testament. So, Caleb, how many books would be before that one? Thirty-nine. But you know the books in the Old Testament are a lot longer than the books in the New Testament. So, it's. What, what did we say it was in Matthew five verse twenty-one? Matthew 5, verse 21. Everybody find it? Oh, it's red letter. Grace, what does it mean when it's red letter? The words of Jesus. It's Jesus who said these words. Now, here's what Jesus said. You have heard that it was said to those of old. In fact, we read it said to those of old. Remember when we read in Exodus? That was way before Jesus. You shall not murder. And whoever murders will be liable to judgment. That makes sense, doesn't it? So it happens today. But I say to you 
that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. Jesus saying, you know, the, the law says you shall not murder, but let's really get down to brass tacks on this. I say to you, if you get really ticked and angry and wish you were dead, die. Or just get really angry, what have you done in your heart? I've broken the fifth commandment, have you? Right? We all have, haven't we? Let's take a look at those. We've broken all of those commandments, but let's take, let's slow down and look at that. Well, back to your catechism. It says, you shall have no other gods. Have you ever let something be more important to you than God? You ever let something be more important than God? Sometimes it's sports. Sometimes you know the right thing to do, and you know what God wants you to do. It's, uh, I don't know, oh. We've broken that one, haven't we? You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Who's ever cursed? Whoever, who's ever forgot to call on God for help when you should have? It's another way of breaking that commandment, isn't it? God, I should have been looking to you for the answer, and I didn't. Remember this day of worship to keep it holy. Who's ever gone to church? Or maybe you've been in there and you said every word of the prayer and you go, I don't remember anything. <laughs> or maybe you sat there and thought about, wow, it's really going to be a good football game this afternoon. This sermon is just taking forever. We're going to, you know, we're going to get to, we're going to get late. Lunch is going to be late and I'm going to miss the kickoff. <laughs> Ever happened to you? Yeah. You know, here's one that every kid knows they've broken multiple times. Honor your father and mother. Who's ever been dishonored your father and mother? Happens, doesn't it? We just talked about murder. You know, the way Jesus said, who's ever been really ticked with someone? Maybe even had good cause. Sometimes without good cause. Sometimes with great cause. You just wish horrible things home. You broke that commandment. You shall not commit adultery. What that is talking about is it's not just our actions in regard to sex, but even our thoughts. Who's ever heard a joke you shouldn't have been listening to? Told a joke you shouldn't have been telling. Thought some things about members of the ex opposite sex. Those guys are stupid. You're idiots. You know? In this day and age, the unfortunate thing is that it happens younger and younger. There are who ever looked at the wrong things on the internet. You know, those things have happened. We've broken those commandments. God says that our actions and our thoughts need to be honorable as we deal with members of the opposite sex. And they're not always that way, are they? Seventh, you shall not steal. Jesus would even go to say, you know, I'm not guilty of stealing, but have you ever stood by and watched somebody else's stuff get broken? And you didn't step in, you know, somebody, one of the, the kids in class is trashing somebody else's stuff, and you didn't step in and stop it. You broken that commandment. You shall not bear your false testimony against your neighbor. I need to tell you about Leonard Wanswitz. I went to school with Leonard. He was in my sixth grade class, and Leonard was just one of us. You know, he's a 12-year-old boy, and he was goofy. Well, not all 12-year-old boys are somewhat goofy. It just comes with being 12, but Leonard was goofier than most. Leonard would say stupid stuff. Now, Leonard was trying to be clever, but it just was stupid. 
And, and the kids in the class would go, what did you say something? They go, well, then shut up. That's stupid. <laughs> right? You hear those kinds of things, right? And, and literally, if you had sense, would have shut up because they were stupid things. Now, I never, ever once said to Leonard, shut up, that's stupid. I knew that was the wrong thing to do. But just when Leonard needed someone to step up and defend him, I didn't step up and defend Leonard. Why not? I was afraid they'd say, Jimmy, shut up, that's stupid. You know, when Leonard needed someone else to stand up for him, I failed to do that for him. I broke that commandment. You ever done that? You know? And you kind of go, oh, I'm glad they're not picking on me. You know? Now, some of those kids that picked on Leonard were, were, were bullets. And, but Leonard needed somebody to step up for him. And, and I, I wish I could go back and apologize to Leonard. But I know if I would have stuck up for him, I would have been, you know, and if all of us could have stuck up for him, it would have been all right. But, you know, that, we've all broken that commandment, right? Have you let somebody's reputation get trashed? Ever gossiped about it? Ever passed things that, you know, so and so and such and such? It's certain your name, isn't it? A reputation. And we do those kinds of things. Now, the last one is coveting. What is the opposite of covet? Anybody got an idea? Covet's looking for, oh, I wish. Oh, that's what I want. And what's the opposite of covet? Being satisfied. Here's what I coveted when I was about 14 or 15. Were the guys that were big and athletic, because I was little and scrawny, been able to, you know, I had a friend in the ninth grade who could stand flat-footed and jump up and dunk a basketball. Wow, was I jealous. That looked so cool. I wasn't satisfied with the way God made me. Anybody ever been sometimes dissatisfied with the way you are? You think, you know, I'm not athletic enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, my hair is too... You know, I weigh too much, I weigh too little, my feet are too big. But God calls us to be what? Satisfied. Just, just the way we are. You know what? It, the older I get, the easier it is to be satisfied with me. I still wish I could knock a basketball. When I get to heaven, that's one of the first things I'm going to do. <laughs> now I'm going to, I'm going to dunk a basketball. How many of these commandments have you broken? All of them. We've broken all of them. And the purpose of being honest about ourselves is to ask God to do what? Forgive us. Forgive us. <coughs> now I, where did I put it? I've got a worksheet for you to do. We're going to have to go quick to fill it out. This will be in preparation. Now, what's our purpose of talking about those Ten Commandments? Is not to drive us to despair, but to say, you know, God solved it for us, didn't he? Clayton, what did he do for you and for me to solve that problem of sin? He sent somebody for us. Who was that? Jesus. And what did Jesus do that was so important for us, Justin? He died for us. Yeah, he died on the cross. Now, I want to correct your language. He didn't die for our sins. He died for you and for me because of our sins. So I'd like you to say because instead of, and if you wouldn't mind filling me out for more, we'll get that too. Hard. What we're going to have to do is go real fast. Give me 100% because I took longer on that than I thought I would. Retelling your own words the Genesis 3 account. Who could do that? Who can tell us about Genesis 3? Grace, do you remember what Genesis 3 is about? The story of Adam and Eve. So you got to get off the green sheet and get to the white sheets. Give us 100%. You'll do 100% on your test. So put your name on this review worksheet. First thing. Retell in your own words the story of Adam and Eve. Write that down right now. 
What do you think you would need to include in that story of Adam and Eve that we talked about about a month ago? What's one thing? Um, they sinned. They, sin. they understood what it was they were to do, but they sinned. What else did they do after they had sinned? When God came looking, they hid. And when God came confronting, they made they laid blame on each other. They made excuses. Write that in your words. What I'd be looking for you to do is to make sure you include about four things. They understood what they were supposed to do, but they sinned, they tried to cover it up, and they made excuses. They blamed others for their sin. right here. So that when you take this home and study it, so Justin write some things down. You don't have what? Oh, what do you need to do? Ask. Don't just sit there. You take the initiative. What are you going to ask? This is so good sitting right to your left. Isn't she? Why don't you ask her really nicely? <laughs> Now, not, you don't want to have it. You're going to do what with it? Yeah, use your yeah, Thank you. She didn't give it away. She loaned it, all right? <laughs> and it's her favorite pen, so she expects you to be my own correct answer. All right? You can do it. I know you know this one. I'm going to ask you to come back and finish that later. Could you stop right where you are and move to number two, three, and four? How are you and like you and I like Adam and Eve? What's one of the ways, Hunter? We all sin. We all sin. Absolutely. Number two, we all sin. Number three, Cassidy, how else are we like Adam and Eve? Okay, uh, and what's the other one? When we're caught, we run. When we've, when we've caught, we run or cover it up. And then thirdly, we try to blame others. You got it. There's three ways. We sin. When we get caught, we try to cover it up or try to run away. Try to hide. Both of those covering up and, hide, and running away are hiding strategies. And thirdly, we blame others. Make sure everybody's, make sure your partner's getting good, right answers on this. This is one where we want to help each other get it the right way. Number five, God did not leave Adam and Eve after they had sinned. What evidence do you and I have that God does not leave us in the face of our sin and rebellion? Macy, what's the evidence that you and I have that God doesn't leave us. He, that Jesus died. Not for our sins. He died for us because of our sins. Okay? The evidence that we have that God doesn't just turn his back is that he, he sent a Savior Jesus. I'll be writing that somehow in number five. Number six, you ready? Okay. Tonight, you don't have to, but tomorrow or next week in the test, I really like you writing complete sentences. If you got time, do it. What's the basic problem of human of uh, human beings? Justin? We sin. We sin. That's our problem. We sin.
Matthew, how, God, how has God solved this problem of sin? He sent his son. He sent his son, Jesus. To be the Savior. In fact, most of this you know already. It's not stuff you're going to have to study. But it's stuff that we need to know for eternity. What are the three purposes of the law? Now, I drew pictures up here before, and I don't need the pictures. I need what the pictures teach. What's the first purpose of the law? What? Shows our sin. That's, that's actually what we call the second purpose of the law. But the, what was the first one that we drew up here? What? No, no, no. Three purposes of the law. You're right, Justin, don't give up. Law and gospel are a couple that we'll talk about, but there are three. Remember I drew three pictures? Mm -hmm. The first one looked like offense. God's law protects us. The fence, it protects. Now, the second purpose of the law, it's like a yeah. mirror that shows our sins. It reflects. And the third purpose of the law, who remembers that one? Grace? It's a God. It's a God. It directs. Exactly. Well done, Grace. We haven't looked at that for a number of weeks. Three purposes of the God's law. That it protects us from all the bad stuff. It shows our sin. Helps us come before God and say, God, you know what? i got a problem called sin. Help me. And then it also is a guide that directs us. How's the law like a mirror? Caleb, how would you write that down? How is, remember that SOS? Our sins. God's law is like a mirror. When we look at it, it shows our sins. We look at ourselves honestly. That's what we see. Oh, number 12. Number 12 I have not taught. I just want you to get the key words. This is not an easy one. We'll do a little hanging for this. See if you can get it. Yes. Now this one takes a little time because there's... The words are really long. You don't need to write this down yet. Let's just see if you can get it. Don't shout out answers. All right. Uh, Cassidy, give me a letter. This is for the central teaching of the Christian church. I'll start with the first letter of the alphabet, A. A. Uh, you would. <laughs> All right. Now, Maggie, give me a second letter. Anybody know the answer? any answers yet. Anybody got a clue? Give, who's not giving me a letter yet? Justin, give me a letter. Uh, Too slow. Give me a letter. C. C. Justin, give me a letter.
anybody else? Faith, do you think you could finish that last word for us? Faith, Faith. all right. I can guarantee you we don't have the... Justin, you want to give me a letter? I think I know the letter. Oh, then write it down. Let me see. Spelling doesn't count. Anybody else think they know what the answer is? Write it down. Let me see if you can get... You gotta hurry up, hurry up, write something down. No? Let me see. Uh, close, but not right there. Give me... Who's not giving me a letter yet? Caleb, give me a letter. No, nope, not yet. I know you really put the airport. Yeah, no end. Give me a letter. S. Give me a letter. What? D. 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 Oh, you gave me a T. I missed a T up here. What about nine? Grace, give me another letter. Oh, I missed the letter here that was up there already. Give me another letter, Colby. Colby. Oh. Give me another letter, Cassidy. N. Justin, give me another letter. Justin. Jay. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just a, who had that a while ago? Me. Who didn't get it till the very last letter? <laughs> All right. Oh, right. All I need you to remember right now is justification by grace through faith. What you'll begin to do is unpack that and what it means. One of the keys is Maggie. Justification is a legal term. Your grandfather, your dad, and your two uncles are all lawyers. Whoa. And justification from the biblical New Testament scene is a law term, is a term used in courts. Justification by grace through faith. That's what you need to know. 13, complete the diagram, including the SOSs. Do it with, test yourself, do it with, from memory, not with looking. Excellent, okay, we're on track. Good. SOS didn't occur yet that quickly enough. You've already, if you get the P right, P and S. Problem and solution. Problem and solution. Remember, go across the top of that. Sin. Problem is sin. What is it that helps us recognize that we've got a problem called sin? The, the mirror. And the mirror is the second use of the law. The law helps us show that we have a problem called sin. And then you put that SOS next to it. It shows our sin. Now, Justin, what's the couplet that goes... What's if the problem is sin, the solution is Jesus. 
and it's the law that helps us recognize we've got a problem. What's the message from the Bible that shows that God solved the problem? You. Gospel. And the SOS that goes shows our sin, shows our Savior. Remember it now? What do we call people who have the problem of sin? Saints. No, 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 don't shout. Matthew, what do we call people who have the problem called sin? Sinners. Sinners. And if they're forgiven, we call them? Saints. Saints. Forgiven. And what's, what's the end result for those who are, who have the problem? Grace? Yeah. Death? But those for who live in forgiveness, the end result's life. It just takes a job of your memory. It's been, it is interesting, it's been two weeks since we reviewed this, and it was a little rusty. Who had to stop and think about it a second? It didn't come as quick. What it's a sign is that we need to spend a little time making sure we need to know it. That's very helpful. It recognizes, I would guess that two weeks you'd go, thought, I got this down pat. And you probably did, but repetition is the mother of learning. So you need to know that. Here's the trickier part. Look at what the next thing I ask you to do. And this is where students struggle. Explain the diagram. Listen first before you begin to write. Here's the way. We have a problem called sin. God's law shows us the problem that we're sinners on the path headed to death. But God has provided a solution, Jesus. The gospel is the good news that he is our savior, that we are forgiven saints who are headed to life eternal. See how I can use that, this diagram to simply explain what God's plan is for those who sin. And that's what I need you to write in your own words, carefully. This is a place where students get in a hurry and they just write the words without link. Do you see how I link them together? Human beings have a problem called sin. God's law shows us our sin, that we're sinners headed on a path to death. But God's provided the solution. His Son, Jesus, our Savior. The good news, the gospel is the good news that he died to forgive us so that we can be saints and into an eternal life. Just a simple kind of way of explaining God's plan. Write that carefully for yourself. If expressing yourself in writing is challenging for you to do, next week I'm going to allow you to come up and explain this to me, okay? I don't want you to give up. I want you to work at explaining it, but sometimes students, some aren't as good about writing it in a clear way. And I'll, you know, the key is I don't mean you have necessarily here, but have it here, okay? Is that fair enough? Can you grab? This sheet, both law and gospel. I told you it's the hardest, but the best homework I was going to give all year long. 
We thought this was a little challenging. We thought it was pretty simple. Okay. Here is the key for us on this assignment. If you'll note questions 15, 16, and 17 on the test come straight from this worksheet. Here's the key. We have to ask ourselves, does the person recognize their problem? If they don't, what do they need to hear, Cassidy? They don't recognize they've got a problem. What do they need to hear? They need to hear law. If they recognize their problem, they're ready to hear what? The first one. After you run some errands for a neighbor, this is the one we did in class together. Pull this out, grade yourself. After you run some errands for a neighbor, she asks you to visit with her. She says, seriously, I know I won't live much longer. I'm so old, you know. Oh, I do hope the Lord will take me to heaven. I'm afraid he won't. I made some terrible mistakes in my life, and I just don't know if I'm good enough for him. Macy, does this lady recognize she's got a problem? Yeah. What did she say that leads you to the conclusion that she knows she's got a problem? <clears throat> I'm not good enough. I made some terrible mistakes. What's she ready to hear? That is she ready to hear law or gospel? She's ready to hear gospel, exactly. She needs to know what? You know, you're right. And I would say it to this word, I know exactly what you feel. I've made mistakes and I'm not good enough for, for God. But the good news is that I'm forgiven because of Jesus. I'd be sharing the gospel with her. That Jesus died to take care of those things. What I would say to her is, you know, the way you feel is the way I feel. I know I'm not good enough for God, but I know he took care of it for me. When he died on the cross and rose from the grave, that's sharing gospel. Number two, your friend has begun to run around with a wild crowd that's into drinking, maybe even drugs. It's funny, he says, you ought to try it. His parents have been questioning him a lot lately, but he says, it's my life. I'll do with it what I please. Does this person recognize they've got a problem called sin? No. Grace, what do they need to hear? No. The law. They need to recognize. And that might come across, you know, I'm worried about you, because you're headed down a path that only leads to death. And I'm scared for what's going to happen to you. Because you've got a problem. You see how you would share that? Not in terms of, that's the wrong thing. But I'm worried that you're on, you're on a path that's going to lead just to misery and death. And there's a better, there's a better way. I'd want to share the words of law to help them say, you know, you're right. I've just been covering it up. Hopefully that would be. But you're exactly right. You need to hear. Because they're not ready for a solution, are they? Because they don't recognize they got a problem. How many have got that right? Put words of law down. Now, hopefully, they would then say, you know, you're right. And then they'd be ready to hear what, Faith? Words of gospel. Words of gospel. You're exactly right. Kathy's been in Sunday school with you for years. You've always enjoyed knowing her. Last Saturday, as you spent time together at the mall, you saw her grab a candy bar. This happened among kids? Absolutely. Shoplifting happens. And stick it in her pocket. Out store, she began to eat it, and when she saw your surprised look, she laughed at you and said, Why don't you take one too? They have enough money. Besides, they never catch you. Toby, what's a person need to hear? Words of law. Does that person recognize they got a problem? No. Then you'd say, you know, Kathy, you're on a path that just leads to trouble. Yeah. You want to say law in a tender fashion, right? In hopes that they would confess and that you could share the gospel with them. 
your younger brother is alone and you can see that he's really troubled. You sit down with him and finally he tells you why he's so upset. I didn't want to, but I did. I didn't get a good grade. The teacher wouldn't let me be on the soccer team. So I cheated on the test. Now I feel terrible. Justin, that person recognized they got a problem? Yeah. They know they've got a problem. What do they need to hear? They need to hear gospel. You know, that was wrong. But you can be forgiven. And because you're forgiven, I need you to do something. You need to say to him, you know what? I need you to go tell your teacher and to live with the consequences. That's going to clear your conscience. You know, you've done the wrong thing. You, you know, you didn't sin against me. You sinned against that teacher and against God. You need to go tell him and ask for mercy. But I know you're going to feel They're ready to know. They've recognized their problem. Now they need to face up to it, live with the consequences, and move on, right? So they can live in forgiveness. They may have to miss the soccer game. Yeah. Which would be better? To have that guilt weighing on you and playing the game or to have it wiped away and not play? Probably have it wiped away and not play. Number five, who, who's gotten all four of them right so far? Who needs to do a little bit of work? Okay. Life isn't worth living, a schoolmate tells you. I don't really care if I live anymore. Nobody cares about me. My parents sure don't. They're always away from home. So what's the use? The challenging one. So what do you think we need to say, Matthew? Gospel. Gospel. You know, I think you're exactly right. Now, they haven't said they're a sinner, but they've talked about all what? They're talking about... The darkness. I feel terrible. Life's not worth living. They've not said they've sinned, but they feel the weight of it, don't they? Of a heavy life. That you simply say, but you know, it is worth living. Because we've got a Savior, Jesus Christ, that lifts us out of that muck and mire. Do you think that there are young people who feel that way at times? Absolutely. And you could be the most powerful light to them. That when they're stuck feeling the way. How many of you ever stuck felt the way where you just feel, oh man, this is more than I can bear. Yeah, just feel terrible. I need it lifted. And what we need to do is help lift it off them, right? With the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number six. I guess I'm going to heaven. You hear your neighbors say, if all those church doors are getting there, that I figure I've got a great chance. I live a life better than they do. I work hard and never hurt anybody. Yep, I guess I'll make it. Water gospel. He's got a, he's bold enough to want to try this one. Maggie? Because they don't realize that you don't get, you yourself will get you to heaven if you're faithful. Okay. Yeah, they don't recognize they got a problem. How would you say that? Well, you know what? You're really a sinner and you need to... You know, you know how, here's how I might say to that. You know, you, I guess I'm going to have... All those church are going to get... I've got a great chance. You know, you're exactly right. Church goers sin all the time. Me included. <clears throat> you're exactly right. Church goers, they sin. But you know what gets us to heaven? is the fact that we live in forgiveness. I want to and simply say, you know, I know exactly what you feel like. You're exactly right. We are sinners. We do the wrong thing. But what gets us to heaven is not what we do, but what Jesus does for us. And they need to hear words of law, but you've got to apply it in a gentle fashion. Here's why I love this exercise. It takes what we know and asks you to put it to work. The most important thing that will happen to you is not what you know about your Christian faith, but how do you use it? You can use it very powerfully this year 
and all through your teen years with your friends. You think you're going to have people that have run into classmates that are doing the wrong thing, feeling guilty about it? You think you, you're going to have to have, so you're going to have to stand up at some point. Help them recognize they're on the wrong path. Or when they do recognize they're on their own path, lift them up out of that muck and mire so they can understand forgiveness. You're going to have those opportunities in many ways more than I ever do. More than your moms and dads ever do. And what I want to do is to arm you, help arm you for your life among your friends and in the world. That we know we're sinners, we're forgiven, and we know how to share that in a real way with people who need to hear that message. You got classmates that people you know on the wrong path, doing some things that are going to lead to lots of Or you got some people that are on that wrong path and feel so weighted down by it that you, need, you can lift them up out of it? Absolutely. You think you can answer 15, 16, and 17? What I'm going to do is ask you to transfer on your own at home what's on your worksheet onto this sheet. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to look this over and study it next week. You're going to get a test that looks very much like this. Could you do that for me? Maggie, can you do that? Give us some time and energy. The best thing isn't to just cram for 15 minutes before you get here. The best thing is to five minutes tonight, looking it over. A few minutes tomorrow. A few minutes every day. Uh, repetition is the way to learn. Who here is an athlete? If you want to get good at your sport, you need to practice a little bit every day. One long practice doesn't do it. It's kind of a little bit every day. Just practicing those skills. Same way, it's the way you learn everything, isn't it? So I encourage you that what we're studying is so important for life that I'm going to encourage you. Could you give it some effort this week? What? Acolytes. We're not going to go up to church. We're going to have more time next week. But this is what we use to light candles. When you carry it, you need to carry it this way. If I let it loose, the weight of the bell hangs down. But when you light this and walk like that, it goes out. You need to carry it that way. I am right-handed, so I carry that part in my right hand, and I put my left hand here. If the wick starts to go out, I give it a little more. If it's burning too long and it's a flamethrower, I give it a little less. <laughs> I come to the altar. I walk quietly, make sure I'm not walking so fast that I put it out, or walking so slow that church is going to take two hours to get through. It's going to take us an hour for you to get up to the front. Now we arrive there at the front, we bow, we step up. The tallest candle gets lit longest, so you, you light it first, and then the shortest. If you think of the service in terms of God coming to us, God from heaven coming to us, so... And at the end of the service, you put them out in the office or so. We'll kind of go through that next week, all right? So I carry it this way when I'm lighting? No. This way? Yes. When I come out, I carry it anyway because it's not lit. When you light this, here's the most important thing you teach. Once I've lit it, I put it out, and then I push that back out there. If I let it in there... Your dad gets stuck trying to get all that wax that melted on the inside out of there. <laughs> and then he's got to scramble to get it ready for the next person who's going to could do that. He gets stuck with those fixing those at the last second on Sunday morning. So don't do that to Faith's dad, all right? All right, we'll go through it in more detail. You're going to have to learn to tie the knot, but none of you are on this schedule for next Sunday, are you? This schedule starts in October. October 7th. Who, anybody acolyte on October 7th? Raise your hand. All right. You need to remind me next week we're going to go out to church and practice how to do it for everybody, okay? Who's on October 14th? That kid's upstairs. Who's on October 21st? Who's on October 28th? Who doesn't do it until sometime later? Is there anyone on the list? Would you look at it? <laughs> we'll figure it out. 
Did you get one of those green sheets you put in your thing? And Mr. Jim, Mr. Jim, uh -huh. also whenever they are acolyting, if they don't show up like for the 915 service and one of these nice young children are in service, yeah, I will be pulling you. <laughs> All right. Whoa. How many of you had a great time in your fellowship event last week? What, what I need you to do is, because uh, we're getting ready for a test, I need you to simply get a tight circle right where you are, stand up, get in a circle, and do a circle prayer to, to close. Thank you for working so hard tonight.